one of the most difficult things that I do as, as your pastor is, 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 is not the teaching moment. I, I love teaching. I, I love studying. I, I love getting into God's Word and getting into to materials to learn how people can grow and change and, and make life great. And that's what I want for you, and that's what God wants for you. But, but, the, but the difficult thing is discerning really what you need. Because we are such a d diverse group. You know, we, we have people that are retired. We, we have people that are just starting. We have people that are struggling. We're, we're, we're so diverse. We have full families. We have partial families. We have, we have blended families. We have single families. And, and it, it, there, there's such a wide spectrum. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you meet everybody where they are? Anyway, the second most difficult thing is, is preaching during Christmas and Easter, okay? And, 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 and I don't want this to sound bad. I, I, I never, the story of Jesus never, ever gets old to me, okay? But, but how many different ways can you preach one passage of Scripture? It, it, so I, I try to come up with unique approaches, so, so President Biden gave me some ideas for you this year for Christmas. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and it's not that you should eat less, uh, but, but, but our government's finally acknowledged that, uh, that inflation is not transitory and that it's actually higher than they stated it was. And, uh, and it's kind of escalating, kind of out of control, and they're trying to figure out what to do. And so... And, and so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do my part. So today we start a sermon series, a Christmas series. For the first time in 39 years, I'm not going to preach from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Okay? Now, we're going to be doing the, the Christmas candles, and, and we're going to be reading the Christmas stories, and... And we're going to do something special on Christmas Eve that, that deals with all three, three of the primary texts. Uh, but what I'd like to do is, is I'd like to share with you a biblical approach on gift giving. Okay? And, and I want to help you give some of the greatest gifts that you will ever give this year based on biblical truth and, and not a single one of them is going to cost you a penny. Now, the third problem I have is, is when I come up with something that's original, that's, that, that doesn't, that's, okay, I'm not that smart, okay? I was not born as an original idea. I've never had an original idea. And today is an original idea. And I went, that can't be right. Nobody else is talking about this. And so I went to one of my trusted theologian friends and said, Am I, t I, I finished my sermon way early and said, would you check this out? And am I wrong? The only, only question he had about it at all is that there was too much in it and I probably needed to cut it down because it wouldn't fit within the time parameters. But he said, no, you're not wrong. And I'm going, I've got to be wrong. You see, all my life I've been told that the Bible, and it's true, is, is a record of God's interaction with man. Every, <clears throat> every, every time I've studied the Bible, it's, it's how God loves mankind and how God has made a way and wants to have a relationship with mankind. And I've never looked at the Bible in a particular way. And that is, the Bible is a book of coupons. Now, that sounds weird, doesn't it? The Bible's a, a book of coupons. I mean, when you think about it, a coupon is a voucher entitling the holder to a discount on a particular product or a gift. It is a form in a newspaper or magazine that may be filled in and sent as an application for the purchase or information or a commodity. You, you, from a little kid, I, I was so excited 
here here several several weeks ago Shelly was helping me with a with a fix up the kitchen project and and uh, and I've got I've gone high tech and so I have a wireless uh, saw that goes like that and then I've got a wireless saw that goes like that and then I've got two different types of screwdrivers and you know and and I've got you know and they're all these bags but anyway when I work on something I have to line the walls with all these different chargers because they're all different types and they even the same types have different sized batteries and so there's like eight chargers plugged up all around the room you know and I you know Sweetheart, can you bring me, no, no, the other battery, no, the, no, the oblong battery, no, the green battery, yeah, yeah, that one, okay. Well, you didn't have that one plugged, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a disaster. Until last week, and I got a coupon. It was like a kid. going into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory with a golden ticket. They had a rolling toolbox that had every electric tool that I have that all used the same battery, the same voltage, the same shape, and the same charger. And I saw that coupon and my heart went, If only. <clears throat> so Shelly and I got the coupon. We're gone. I said, sweetheart, I figured out what I want for Christmas. And so we went to the store and, uh, you know, and she said, you don't have to drag me. It's okay. And so we got in there and I, I, I found a guy and I said, listen, I want this. And he said, you're going to have to order it online. I'm scared to order online because the credit card gets all messed up and people start charging you from Timbuktu and, you know, Zimbabwe 3 and all that kind of stuff, you know. Every time staff asks, Nora, I need to buy something online, Nora goes, oh, we've got to cancel them all again. So anyway, I'm scared of that. So I said, no, I, I want it. I, I need it because it's my Christmas present. He said, we don't have one. But I have a coupon. And it says I've got a coupon. I've, I've, but I, but y'all have mailed me a coupon. Okay? He said, sir, I'm sorry, but you should have come earlier today when, when they went on sale. And this wasn't Black Friday. I mean, this was, this was Save Your Money Monday, you know. And I'm going, dude. What am I supposed to do now? He says, well, order, I, I don't do online, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm a technological nymphcompoop, okay? I just, I don't do that kind of stuff. So he, what do I do? He says, sir, I'm sorry, but I guess you're just not going to get one. And I went. So we got in the car, and Shelly's on her cell phone, and, and she said, sweetheart, they've got one in Seagoville and the store closes in 20 minutes. Honey, nothing's, it's like, Siegelville to me is like Bethlehem, you know? Nothing's ever good ever come out. I, I'm not going to say that. There's probably somebody watching Siegel. Anyway, so I, I just, I, I just, I don't have a problem with it. I just never have been, you know, there. I mean, I've only lived here 19 years. I mean, why, why go south from where I live? So she said, they've got one in Siegelville. And I said, okay. So uh, anyway, we pulled out. On, we're on 635, and Shelly says, honey, you're a pastor. And I said, yeah, I, I am. She said, you know how you tell people to obey the laws of the land? And I said, yeah, baby, I, I'm obeying the laws. She said, have you looked at the speedometer here lately? Cars are going backwards around us. And I went, I was thinking about this box. Anyway, to make a long story short, I got my box and I used my coupons. So <clears throat> anyway, I've already used my Christmas gift. <clears throat> I've put it back in the living room. I put it all back together. I put all the packs, but, but it's really nice. Now, how in the world is the Bible like a coupon to get a discount on a box of tools? Well, I am so glad that you asked. Psalm 50, verse 15, the psalmist said this, 
Call on me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will honor me. He says, now, when you get in trouble, I'm the person you call. What is that? A, a promise that you and I, when we need it, when it fits our purpose, we can call on God. We can present our slip of paper and say, okay, God, I'm redeeming my coupon. How about another one, Matthew 7, 7? Ask and it will be given to you. Aha, uh -huh, coupon. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. I promise you in every single promise of God, it's not going to be showing up at the store and the guy looks at you and says, well, we didn't think there'd be that much need, so we didn't order enough. Do you know that God is never going to look at you and say, you know, I don't have time for you today. God doesn't put limits on asking and seeking. How about another one, John 15, 5? I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. God said, hey, if you want to make a difference, if you want to bear fruit, if you want to have a life that's meaningful and full of purpose, if you'll call on me and abide on me, I tell you what, that's a coupon I will never turn away. Do you know there are over 7,100 promises that God has made to his children in the Bible? 7,100. Do, do you not think that's a little bit significant? If, if God saying, call on me when you need me, is not significant, he does it 7,100 plus times. So what I thought I would do is very quickly, I'm going to share with you the top 10 God coupons that you can use every single day. Now, this is just my top 10 list. It's kind of an homage to David Leverett. Number one, God, the God is always good coupon. God is always good. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. God is always going to be good to you. Just call on him. Number two, God is always with me. Have you ever felt like you were alone? You ever felt like that nobody understands what I'm going through? You ever wondered, how am I going to survive this on my own? God said this, this is my command, be strong and courageous. What is the problem with being alone? We're not strong, we're not courageous. We get discouraged and afraid. We feel isolated. For God, your God is Help me out with you wherever, wherever you go. Do you not think that's a coupon that you need to redeem every single day? No matter where you go, you say, well, Carl, I go to some pretty seedy places. So what? God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm never going to turn my back on you. It's not about how you act. It's not about how good you look or if you fixed your hair right. God said, I will always be with you. Number three, God is faithful. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is, he's faithful. God's always going to come through. Number four, God is kind and compassionate. I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor present or, nor the future nor any power nor height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what I did? I, I, I went from one verse just straight into the other one, didn't I? I'm reading up there and both of them are there. Though the mountains be shaken, the hills removed, yet my unfailing kindness for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Who has compassion? You ever heard the phrase, you know what, I just need a hug. The Bible says in that day when you need somebody to be compassionate, God said, I'm your guy. Here's your coupon. Number five, God loves me regardless. I've already read the scripture from Romans 8, 38 and 39. Have you ever had a bad day? 
Have you ever had a bad day because you made it a bad day? Have you ever been going down 635 and your wife goes, aren't you a pastor? Yeah. Uh, you know the cars are going backwards that are around us? Sweetheart, why you, do, you never do this. What are you doing? Well, there's only one left. She said, oh, so we break the law when there's one left. Okay, sorry, Lord. Sometimes it just... Ah! And you get caught. Do you know, regardless of what you've gotten caught doing, God still loves you? I want you to let that sink in. How about number six? God gives me power for life. Well, I need that coupon. For the Spirit of God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power. The word power is dunamis, which we get the word dynamite. It is explosive power in our life. Love and self discipline Number seven, God will fill me with hope. May the, the hope, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God's going to give you hope. Number eight, God will strengthen and help me. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Well, that's a good coupon, isn't it? How about coupon number nine? God will give you wisdom. You ever wonder what to do? What am I going to do? If any of you last ask wisdom, he should do what? Ask God. Well, that's a good coupon. There are times I ask my, my wife something, and she goes, have you talked to God about that one? Just ask. Number 10, God promises, I'm going to tell you what, I love this, and this is my favorite one. I put it last, because I, I, if I would have started with that, we wouldn't have never left it. My favorite one is this one. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they might have life and have it what? Abundantly. That's a coupon that you need to redeem every single day. God, I want the abundant life that you promised. So, what does this have to do with you? I think that today we need to spend a couple of minutes talking about how you and I need to give coupons to people that we love. Give, give to others the way that, that God gives to you. What do you mean, Carl? Okay, here's exactly what I'm saying. Let me, I'm, I'm going to say this slowly. Instead of giving relatives money, instead of giving your husband a toolbox full of tools, including giving your husband a toolbox full of tools, give him a coupon. There are three th key things that I have learned by studying God's coupons that we need to make sure that we focus on while we give our coupons. Remember, it's not going to cost you anything. Just get out a piece of paper and go, coupon. And if somebody says, where did you get this hokey idea? Say, my pastor at my church told me the best thing I could do for you is give you a coupon. I'm going to tell you what, if you'll do these three things in your coupon, they won't look at you like you're stupid They'll look at you and go, wow, I never thought of that. Best present I ever got. Number one, check your focus. Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord do what? They range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. What I want you to think about here is the Bible says that God's eyes are ranging, they're roaming across the earth, and he's focusing on what? Those whose hearts are committed to him. So he is studying you. You need to be a student of the person you're going to give a coupon to. Uh, I had a stack of coupons that we got just this last week in the mail. I thought I'd bring them to show you, but I said, you know what? This is nuts. I don't have to do this. <clears throat> we got a coupon at our house for $10 off from O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Who was that name to? 
It was sent to whom at our house? It was sent to me, okay? Because I'm the guy that buys parts there. They've got my telephone number, and I guess they know where I live, and they send me a coupon. Come in. Uh, I've got coupons from Home Depot, Lowe's. <clears throat> I got a, a coupon from the jockey store in Terrell. The front of it had a picture of a woman in her drawers. And I'm thinking, that's what every Baptist pastor wants his postman to see. I, I, I don't want that. You know, what, you know what I need, Crystal? I'm going to help you out, okay? I'm just thinking about Crystal. Okay, Crystal is, is my women's apparel guru, okay? She owns a little store outside of town, the Gypsy Heart. It's got some of the most adorable things in it in all the world. She doesn't need to send me a coupon to the store for 50% off my purchases because I promise you, there is nothing in her store that I would ever think of wearing. Crystal, you know what kind of coupon I need from you? Here we go, you ready? A coupon from the Gypsy Heart Boutique for men, if you want to know what to get your wife that's going to look good on her, that she's going to like wearing, that's actually going to fit, and she's not going to have to take back, come to me and I'll give you free advice. Just come to my store. That's the coupon I need. When, when I want to buy my wife some cowboy boots, who do I call? I don't ask my, cow, my wife what kind of cowboy boots you want. I call Crystal. Why? Because if you want to know what kind of cowboy boots your wife would like, you just call Crystal. I mean, Crystal knows this kind of stuff. I don't. My first year for Christmas, I bought my wife a pair of tennis shoes that were three sizes too small. It was intentional. Because, I mean, they had like 200 sizes, 200 pairs. So I, I, I intentionally bought the wrong size so that I could take her back to the store because she knew my intent. She knew what I wanted. She needed a new pair of tennis shoes. I mean, we took aerobics class in college together. She needed a pair of tennis shoes. She said, boy, I sure could use a new pair of tennis shoes for the aerobics class. And I'm going, aha. Focus your attention on them. So look at this person that you want to give something and say, who are they? What do they need? Notice Luke 19. Jesus entered Jericho and he was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but was short and he could not see over the crowd. Now he continues on, so he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree to see him. Since Jesus was coming that way, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, Come down immediately, I must stay at your house. Now if you read the text, Zacchaeus was curious about Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to get a sight, sighting of Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to know what this spectacle was about, but Jesus understood that what Zacchaeus was, was lonely. What Zacchaeus was, was isolated. What Zacchaeus was, was an outcast from community. So when Jesus saw him, he said, I tell you what, Zacchaeus, man, boy, get out of that tree because I need a place to go. Can I sit down with you in your house? And Zacchaeus is going, my house? My house? Nobody ever comes to my house. Nobody wants to be in my house. I'm, I'm an outcast. Nobody likes me. Zacchaeus, don't. I think Jesus would have looked at him and said, don't you think I know that? Why do you think I want to go to your house? Why do you think Jesus said it out loud so that everybody would know, Zacchaeus, I want to go where you are. Because Zacchaeus understood, Jesus, excuse me, understood what Zacchaeus needed. Number two, check your timing. Check your timing. And you say, Carl, what do you mean by that? Let's just go straight to the scripture. Psalm 50, 14 and 15. Sacrifice, thank offerings to God, fulfill your vows to the Most High, and call on me in the day of trouble. 
and I will deliver you. You see, giving a coupon is not just important, but it is it is it needs to be time focused, time sensitive, time specific. When you study the person, you need to make sure that there's a specific time. It, it, it's not when when it's it's not when it's available to you. It's when they need it. The other day, <clears throat> I was minding my own business and. Shelly came out and said, you know, honey, you know, Rebecca's got these three little kids and, yeah, yeah, you know, and, you know, she's awful tired and, yeah, Mike's working a couple of jobs, yeah, and she said, and I think we need to take the kids off her hands and I'm going <clears throat> sleepless night, check, check, <laughs> having to eat weenies dipped in barbecue sauce and grape jelly, check, check not getting to sleep in bed with my wife. Check, check. Sweetheart, when were you thinking about doing this? Well, you know, you know, uh, Thursday, you know, we've got everybody coming over and I'm going, yeah, I'm cooking for 16, 17, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. And I was thinking that after everybody left, Rebecca could just leave the kids there. Hmm? Well, you know, I mean, they're already going to be there, so they can just, just stay. And I'm thinking, <clears throat> all right. Okay. Yeah, let's have the whole family over and keep them over all night. Yes, praise God. We had a wonderful time. It was great. I asked Rebecca, I said, what'd you do? She said, Dad, I slept all night long. And I didn't have the heart to tell her, baby, I didn't. <laughs> have you ever had a two-year-old stick her toe between rib three and four and just gouge? And then go, Monsieur, will you rock me? Then a one-year-old going, Aah! at three o'clock in the morning. It was a sleepless night. But you see, Shelly knew that Rebecca hadn't had a sleepless night in a while. You know, that's what God does. He doesn't go, I tell you what, wait until I have time. Wait until it's good for me. God says, you know, I tell you, wait until you need it, and that's when I'll be there. If you'll write your coupon and you'll focus on who they are, if you'll focus on the timing, and number three, make it personal. One of the passages of Scripture that's meant the most to me in my life is Psalm 40. David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. Now, before we go on, I, I want to I talk about that slimy pit, okay? A, a slimy pit is an old well. Now, what they would do in the Old Testament is they would dig a hole in the ground and they would chisel through the sandstone and then once they got down, they would slip somebody down the hole and they would start digging the sides out. And it was almost like the bottom half of a big hourglass. And so over time, as, as the winds blew, junk would get in the hole and slip down to the bottom. So the bottom became this mucky mess. So if you ever fell in the hole, you could never climb your way out because you were covered in muck. You're crawling up the side wall of the hole, but then you realize that. So how did God get David out of the hole? He lifted me out of the slimy pit, should be, should say, he came down and grabbed me and lifted me out. 
I want you to hear me as a child of God. There is never a pit that you're going to climb in that God's not going to climb in it with you. It doesn't mean he wants to be there. It doesn't mean that he likes it. It doesn't mean that he agreed with you getting yourself in that. It simply means that God said, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And as soon as you realize you're in that pit, God says, okay, now, can we get out of here now? You know, it kind of stinks. This morning, you're having the second pot of gumbo because yesterday afternoon, I didn't want to cook gumbo late last night, so I cooked me up a pot. You know, I, you know, everybody just pull five pounds of shrimp out of the freezer and get your stuff together and, you know, start cooking your vegetables and put your butter in there and pour your oil in there and get it ripping, let her rip tater chip. And, you know, so, so mom and I, before we go to my parents to watch a good old-fashioned western, I took a sip of it, a little, little sip of it, and I went, It was the nastiest stuff I ever put in my mouth. Oh, that was nasty. I'm telling you, it was the nastiest gumbo you will ever put in your mouth. I said, Shelly, you got to try this. What's wrong with my gumbo? It's nasty. And to let you know how smart my wife is, she looked at me and she went, I concur. <laughs> Boy, that tastes burnt. I didn't burn my, I don't burn gumbo. But taste burnt. I said, I didn't burn the gumbo. She said, well, what'd you put in? Well, the same thing I always put in it. She said, where'd you get the oil? I said, well, it's right there in, there in, the, in the, 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 the bottom of the pantry right there. And she said, you know, we're out of oil. And I said, no, we're not. There's a whole bottle there. She said, no, that was, remember, you cook for the church here last month. You, you cook that stuff for the women that you fried the stuff with the fruit in the middle of it stuff, you know. And that was all the stuff that you poured out of the bottom. I've been waiting you to take it off, you know, because you can't put oil in the trash. And I'm going, I put burnt oil in my gumbo. She said, well, maybe we can get the burnt out of it. You know what? You're not going to get the burnt out of it. So anyway, there's three gallons of shrimp gumbo in the trash now. It was just stupid. Just a, a bad mistake I made that I could not fix. Now, you can go to the store and get some more stuff, which we did, you know, 10 o'clock at night. It's fine. But have you ever been somewhere and you go, that's not right. Whether you did it accidentally or you did it intentionally, you got somewhere you never dreamed you'd ever be. And you go, I hope nobody tastes this. I hope nobody sees this. I hope nobody realizes what I've done. The Bible says there's one person that sticks closer to the brother. That's Jesus Christ. He is never going to leave you. He is never going to forsake you. You're not going to go, God, what have I got myself into? No, I know exactly what you've got yourself into. Now are you going to listen to me so we can get you out? Well, what does that have to do with couponing? Go where they are. A number of years ago, I came home, and we had three little kids. And I think that's why Shelly said, sweetheart, we got to get the kids. We got to get the kids because she remembers what it was like to be because I, I, I worked at a church that paid so much I had to work a night job so that we could actually pay the bills and and uh, have food to eat and I was hardly ever home she was almost like a single mom and and I came home one day and the kids had been watching the Olympics and they poured syrup all over the linoleum floor we'd go to Sam's and buy by the gallon they poured a whole gallon out on the floor Rebecca couldn't get her hair to stay up like Christy Yamaguchi, so the boys got out that big old thing of peanut butter you get at Sam's, you know, that big old thing you used to be able to get, and they filled her hair, her long hair that went down past her rear with peanut butter so that it would all stack on top of their head, and they were ice skating all around the kitchen. And I came home just after she had cleaned all of that up, and I said, you know, honey, if you would have, and she went, would you just be quiet? 
I don't want you to know that my wife looked at me and said, just shut up. I don't need you to tell me how to be a mom. I just need somebody to sit there and listen. So I said, yes, ma'am. Our three kids were a handful, so I got on a mission that day. I'm going to tell you. The greatest gift I ever gave my wife. I couldn't find somebody who would take all three of our kids except my mother-in-law, and she was half crazy to do it. But, but she lived all the way in Memphis. We're in South Mississippi, the metropolis of everything, you know. So what I did is I found three people with a lack of intelligence, and each three would take one of my children for 36 hours. And I started calling places, and I found an old house in Natchez, Mississippi, that was built in 1839 that had a clawfoot tub in it that was six foot long, three and a half feet deep, that they would let me rent for the whole day and night so my wife could have a tub. And I, I brought sandals, not sandals, I had, she had, she brought sandals, candles, and so we went on a tour of the place and I said, here you go, baby, this is, this is our room. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, we're eating lunch, but we're not going out. Well, what about the kids? I said, don't worry about the kids. The kids are taken care of. Huh? You're not going home. Listen, supper's going to be out on the deck tonight. You got a couple hours just soak in the tub. I brought your book you've been trying to read for the last couple of years. Everything's taken care of. But, but who's, sweetheart? The kids are taken care of. I've been married for 36 years. My wife's got a one carat, total carat, see whatever it is, ring on her finger. I'm not near as proud of that ring that I gave her one day as I am of that one 24 hours of peace when the kids were running her ragged with two in diapers. I'll never forget being able to do that for her. Why? Did it cost a lot of money? No. It was what she needed, but was afraid she could never get. It's terrible when you've been married for 11 years and you top something and you know I'll never give her something better than that one moment. Do you understand that every day God is looking at you in your life going, what can I do to top yesterday? I did something awesome one day out of 36 years. God wants to do something awesome in your life every single day. Can we look at one more of God's coupons before we shut this thing down? I know that I'm five minutes late. Just go to that last coupon there at the end, guys. Jeremiah 29, not 11, but verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God, God impressed on my heart to let you know today, wherever you are, if you'll just seek him, He'll be there. I know many of you. Some of you are struggling with health issues. Some of you are struggling with family issues. 
Some of you have friends and relatives that are sick and hurting. Some of you had job issues. What an amazing open-ended coupon from God when you seek me with all your heart. You'll find me. I was telling you all about Crystal earlier. Why Crystal? She's a pro. And she knows my wife. My wife is a very unusual lady, most awesome, awesome woman on the face of the earth, in my opinion. We've been looking for shoes for years, boots for years. Taking her, taking her shopping is like, is like hitting your head against a brick wall trying to find her boots because they just don't make boots to fit her. So not in my wife's presence. I got on my phone, clicked Crystal McGee and said, Crystal, I need to buy my wife some boots. And she told me exactly what the problem was for my wife finding boots that fit. She told me where to go what brand to look at, how much money I was looking at, and what they had. And I'm going, you know, I've been trying to get this done for two years. All I need to do is call Crystal. You say, Carl, what in the world does this have to do with this? Here you go, you ready? When you get finished saying, okay, God, I'm ready, what is it that you have for me? I'm open, I'm available, God, here I am. Just tell me, tell me, God, what you got for me. And God does, and you get doing it, you're going to go, man, I didn't have to go boot shopping 28 times over a two-year period in frustration. You're going to go, all I had to do was ask God. The greatest day of your life, you're going to learn the greatest lesson you'll ever learn. All I had to do was ask God. When you seek for me and search for me with all of your heart, you will find me. Pretty simple. If you really want to give a great gift this year for Christmas, make sure in your big bag of things is a coupon that you've studied the person, you've studied the timing, and said, wow, this is it. Please stand, let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your love and your grace. Father, I pray that each of us would just burn those 10 awesome coupons in our life out of the 7,100. God, from the beginning to the end, your Bible is filled with coupons, filled with promises to your people. Father, I think maybe it's time that we in our lives actually begin to redeem some of them. Cash them in. Father, I know you're waiting. Father, I pray you'd help us to give gifts that really matter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The band's going to lead us in a final song of worship. If you need somebody to pray with or talk to, I'll be so